Hello guys, welcome back to another video. So today in the Crypto Mining 101 series that we're doing, and this is going to be probably every week on a Monday, we're just going to be going over topics that you guys suggest in the comments and then topics that I think of as well. But today we're going to be going over power, how that links to the efficiency of mining and how that links to profitability. So these are very basic things that you should learn before you get into crypto mining. And I think it would be beneficial for you to learn the inner workings of how it works in terms of power, how that's linked to efficiency, and then how we can produce more profits from these two factors. So just quickly, overall power in terms of that, we're talking about electricity. So the electricity prices, efficiency is linked into the power. We're going to go through all of this. Efficiency is linked through to the power. So that's why we're starting with the power cost or electricity cost. And then profitability is linked to both of these. So let's start off with power. So as you can see right here on the power section, we have a utility bill. So we're going to go over a couple of things. Now, I'm going to say this right now. Every utility bill is definitely going to be different. This is, I think, just a sample utility bill that I got off the internet. However, for the most people, it's going to show these certain things. It's just going to be looking different for you. So you kind of got to work around and look for these figures so that you can actually calculate the profitability and efficiency of what you're doing in terms of mining. So the power, the first thing that you need to know is the cost per unit or cost per kilowatt hour, which we see here. And this is 16 cents per kilowatt hour. Now, golden range, I'd say, is 12 cents per kilowatt hour and lower. That's going to make you pretty much profitable on every sort of device that you're going to be mining with. So CPUs, GPUs, FPGAs, and ASICs. Obviously, there's more profitability as you go higher. So more profitability from CPU to GPU and then GPU to FPGA, and then FPGA to ASICs. So the more you can reduce this power bill, the more profitability you're going to have in the future. So cost per kilowatt hour, what does that mean? So the kilowatts per hour, which means, which means every 1000 watts that you use, this is how much you pay for it. And then I believe some people might have an on and off peak charge. So there might be times where you get a lower power cost for off peak, and a higher power cost for on peak. Now you're gonna actually have to look at your own statement and I'm pretty sure it's easy to find this. It will just come through the mail or it might be on your email every month and it will show you how much you're paying for these units. And if you have an on and off peak time, I would suggest you mine in the off peak time because you're basically gonna have more profitability in that time, but you could also offset it through the on peak time as well. So when you're looking at kilowatts per hour and on and off peak, it's the kilowatts per hour. So this is how many it costs for one kilowatt hour. And then it's times by how much consumption you have. So if you have a thousand kilowatts per hour, it would be a thousand units times the unit charge. And that would give you the actual total that you see here. So this is what you're going to be using at the end of the day to actually calculate your profitability. A lot of websites like Hashrate NO will give you a profitability calculator, but you're actually not going to know the profits until you calculate them out after the fact of mining. And then when you get your actual electricity bill through the mail or on the email, I wouldn't necessarily rely strictly on those mining profitability calculators. Some of them might not update as quick and you'd probably have to calculate it at the end of every month to actually see the real time profit and not the ones from the calculators. So there also is other charges that you have to factor in. And this is why I'm saying maybe you should look at your power bill is because you're also spending on a delivery charge. It's not going to be much, but it is going to add up as you can see there, 143. And there's also going to be a transmission charge. So in a lot of countries, they just bundle this in. It's normally called like a stand in charge or a day rate charge, which is going to be tacked on top of that just for using the electricity every day. And then all of this added up will obviously give you the figure right here. So if you're in a household and you're also using electricity for other things, this is where it kind of gets a bit mixy because you'd have to actually record all the electricity that you used from the machine. And there are ways to do that. And we'll go over them in a little bit. However, this is the main thing you want to look at, which is the cost per unit charge. So if we take it over to Hashrate NO, I can show you where you would input this unit charge. So Hashrate NO, obviously a profitability calculator. And what you would do here is you'd input your power cost on the side. So this one says 10 cents per kilowatt hour, and that's given us a $2.33 profit there. However, if we up it to 20, as we can see there and click enter, 
the profitability changes to $1.28. So there is reason to know your power cost is because then you can see on the calculators which one is the most profitable. Now, when we're talking about cost per unit, I believe that in a lot of states in America, it's very low. You can get it maybe from 10 to 14 cents per kilowatt hour, which is still relatively profitable on GPU mining. It might be on CPU, definitely is on FPGA and definitely is on ASICs. It's only when you get up to, I'd say 25 cents per kilowatt hour, that starts to become very unprofitable for even FPGA mining and GPU mining. So I'd stick to ASICs if you're above that because you're gonna basically lose a lot in profitability just because your electricity is pretty high. If we're talking a global scale like we see on this map, I'll just outline a couple that have good electricity prices right now so you can kind of know if you're gonna be very profitable on GPU mining without even looking at your power bill firstly and if it's something you wanna get into. So Canada and United States is very good. I believe Canada is slightly better than United States so that's a golden region. If you want to mine it, which is in Canada, I believe up in Alaska as well, it's pretty good. I don't know about these prices down here, but I assume that they're not going to be as good as United States or Canada. Now, most of Europe, I'd say from around this circle, is not going to be very profitable to mine in. Just because there's high electricity prices, I'd even say up to here. However, if we get rid of them, I think that the Scandinavian countries are very good as well. Norway, Sweden and Finland. They have relatively low electricity because they have their own oil over there. Russia is very good, it's very low for electricity prices. Now China kind of is as well, but the mining is not really viable there. And I don't believe that you'd be watching this if you were in China. So Australia is relatively good. However, it's not as good as United States and Canada or the Scandinavian countries and Russia. There is also low prices around here. However, to mine in them, you know, it's uh, not really viable because there's a lot of other things that are going on in those places that you wouldn't really want to mine between them. There is a slight region down here, I'd say as well, that is also very good for mining. If you're in Europe and you're looking to mine, but you don't really have the energy cost, I would consider if you're looking to make a sizable income from mining, you would move the operation down to this region just because the prices of electricity are lower here. I don't have any information on Africa, so don't quote me on any of that. So overall, as we can see outlined, these are probably the best places. I think Iceland might also have good prices as well in terms of electricity. If you're in Greenland and mining, you're probably going to have good electricity prices as well. So those are the ones outlined for electricity and where the best places are to get the best cost per unit charge. I believe in the United States, Texas and Louisiana. So down here is probably the best for mining and then obviously Canada, which is above that. So now we covered the power side and this kilowatts per hour and the cost of the kilowatts per hour. That's the main figure that we're looking for when we have to move over to efficiency. So as we can see on this lol minus screen here, we have the efficiency side and I did cover this in a previous video. However, if we look here, this is efficiency. So it's a calculation of the mega hash on your rig. So this might be GPU, CPU, FPGAs or ASICs, and then it's divided by the watts used. So normally a miner will display the watts. So overall watts right here is 319.1. And then you take the mega hash, so overall, and divide it by the 319.1 to give you the efficiency, I believe overall of 0 0.359. So the higher the efficiency, the better it is. That means the more profitability that you can make going forward in the future. So as I said, the calculation is mega hash, or it might even be giga hash, divided by the watts. It, depending on what hardware you're using, it might even be in peta hash. It just depends on if you're mining on ASICs, CPUs, or GPUs. So it's your hash rate divided by your watts. That's all it is. Now, efficiency is definitely one of the biggest metrics in mining because that obviously links into profitability. If you can increase efficiency, and there are various many ways to increase it on all the hardware that you can get out there, such as ASICs, you know, you can actually overclock them, same with GPUs, FPGAs, and stuff like that. You know, you can even repad some of the GPUs out there with copper mods and stuff like that, if that's something that you're looking into. That will increase efficiency as well. 
You can put them in server cases. We're talking about GPUs slash FPGAs now. In a server case, you don't use as much electricity. There are various different ways where you can increase efficiency. So it be in a colder country, that's going to increase efficiency because you don't spend as much electricity or use as much electricity on the actual cooling of your hardware. For example, like places like Canada, that doesn't get very warm in the summer as well. You wouldn't have to blow the fans as much as a percentage. So therefore, you're going to be more efficient because you're not using power on that. Now, when it comes to the minor software in terms of efficiency, this doesn't actually register for the whole rig that you would be using. For ASICs, it's a bit different because that is going to register. However, when you're working with CPUs, GPUs and FPGAs, this mining software is only going to give you the watts for what you're using. So this 3070 Ti and this 3060, they're on a rig which is also being run, you know, with a power supply, a CPU that has to be in there and various other things like the hard drive, which is going to use up watts. This isn't going to give you an overall figure of the actual efficiency of the whole rig in general. So one of the main ways that us miners would do this is through a wall plug that actually measures the electricity going through the whole rig. So I've just stolen this quickly from Red Panda Mining's video and this is what it kind of looks like. So it's at the wall and it registers the actual watts that are coming through, how much power you've actually used. So this is going to be good when you're linking it to into the cost per unit charge. So you can just take this figure, times it by the cost per unit charge and that's how much you're actually paying. And then you would also take this watts figure and divide it by the hash rate. So this is at the wall, remember, so it's going to be very different to what the whole rig is working with. This is going to display the actual figure and then you can take your hash rate that you had before. So if we to get rid of this, you can take your hash rate, which would be 114. And let's say it's 400 at the wall. This is what it's called at the wall. It would actually give you a lower efficiency because you're using more watts overall on the whole rig. So there are a lot of things to look out for in terms of that. So, so you kind of have to monitor this and it is a good investment to get one of these meter boxes because it will also show you the best efficiency that you're getting and it will show you if anything's wrong with the rig in terms of the not pulling watts and stuff like that. So it's very good to invest in one of these and will help you in the future in terms of reading the actual efficiency, linking it to the hash rate and then linking it to profitability. Now let's move into profitability, which is the main thing that we're going for in terms of crypto mining. And we will get into unprofitable mining in a later video, but let's just stick to the basics. So profitability, what is it? So it's the cost overall. So let's just take this figure of 3,700. So we have a figure of $3,700 and that's how much we're actually paying for electricity. However, you then need to take the price of the coin that you mined. So let's say that you mined I don't know, flux, and the flux is worth $2,000. This would then give us a minus profitability of $1,700. So you can see how you are unprofitable there. You're in the negative by $1,700. This is what profitability is about. So this is why we need the power, and we need to also look at the watts and the efficiency of our rigs. So if you can increase efficiency, you can lower this figure that we spend on power, and then it becomes more profitable to mine. So that is in a negative profitability if we take this out and let's say that we actually earned around $4,000 in flux coin whilst we are mining in a month. That would give us a nice profitability of $300 overall within the month. So you can see how the profitability is linked into the power cost and into the efficiency. So as I said, we're looking for the lowest cost per unit charge and the highest efficiency. That is kind of the golden rule. You want to go for low power cost. If you can relocate and you have the freedom to do that, it's definitely something that you should look into if you've got a lot of hardware. I wouldn't necessarily uproot just if you've got a couple of rigs. I would focus more on improving efficiency on those rigs before you make that move. However, you want to get low cost per unit charge and then you want to also focus on efficiency. And you want to really focus on how much the whole rig is pulling overall we're mainly talking about CPU, GPU, and FPGA mining at that point because ASICs, they will normally read the wattage at the wall within a couple of watts. So it doesn't necessarily really matter how much you're reading at the wall because it will tell you anyway within a couple watts. 
So let's just run through a quick example here of what it would look like in terms of the calculations. So you know your power cost, and right here we have 12 cents per kilowatt hour. And then we know how much power we're drawing, so we're drawing 500 watts at the wall. We know the price of the coin, which is $1 per coin, and then we know how many coins we mined within the month. So we're going to go on a monthly figure and not on a daily figure. So we need to convert firstly the power, so 500 watts, we need to convert that into kilowatts per hour. So it's a simple calculation, you just take away the two decimal places between the two, and that gives us a 0 0.5 kilowatts per hour. So now we take the kilowatts hour, so it's uh, 0 0.5 here, this is how many kilowatts we use in an hour, times by the price of one kilowatt per hour. So 0 0.1 2 would give us 0 0.06 I believe and that's how much it costs to run every hour so 6 cents to run this every hour now obviously we would times this by a factor of 24 to give us the daily cost of it so times by 24 and that would give us a figure of $1.44 per day to run this and then we also need to times this per day. So remember, these are in dollar figures per day times by 30 because there's 30 days in a month. So if you're following along, great. If you're not, please leave a comment below and I'll try to help you out. So that's times by 30 days, which would give us a figure of $43.20. I believe if the calculation's right. So that's how much we paid in power. So let's just put a little dollar sign there. That is how much we paid within the month. Now that's for the power. So how much it costs to mine overall using these calculations. And now we can actually move on to calculating the price of the coin. So let's just draw a line there. So I've made this very easy for myself. So at $1 per coin, we mine 200 coins within the month. So that gives us a figure of $200. Now all we need to do is subtract the actual price of the power, so 43.20, and that would give us our actual profitability of $165.80 overall. Now obviously those are very good profits, if you're talking about GPU mining and ASIC mining, those are kind of unheard of profits, however obviously the figure might be closer. So if you're in the negative in terms of when you do this calculation outwards, that means you're obviously not profitable. And as I said, the ways to fix that are looking at efficiency or looking at lowering your power costs. Now that can be done through uh, speaking to your power provider, see if there's any different plans you can go on, or you can look into efficiency first in terms of re-padding your GPUs or overclocking. So hopefully you guys enjoyed. And if you learned anything, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more content like this. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below, suggest new videos, and you can join the Discord to ask questions as well and leave suggestions.